Pope Francis says it is not his place to judge gay priests for their sexual orientation. The Pope was speaking with reporters on the flight back to Rome from South America and said, quote, if someone is gay and he searches for the Lord and has goodwill, who am I to judge? Some see this as evidence that the church is on a path to become more inclusive. Others say the Catholic Church has always taught judge the sin, not the sinner. I'm so supportive of what Pope Francis is doing and what he's saying right now. So I, I feel that's real hope for the church. I'm very hopeful that this uh, pope is going to change things. Is he going to stir up things by doing it? Sure, but that's the only way change comes. The church has never uh, claimed to judge uh, the person of, uh, that has same-sex attraction. So whatever, you know, the comments he made are completely in line with the church being uh, welcoming. We're not in any position to judge anyone. So it's more the, uh, the lifestyle that we consider is not in line with what God would want from us. The Diocese of Dallas said Pope Francis's remarks regarding priests do not signal any change in Catholic law or teaching. The church states clearly homosexual persons must be accepted with compassion, respect, and sensitivity. So to continue the conversation, Catholic author and speaker Steve Kalmeyer is joining us now. Steve, we, I know you've had a busy night, so I appreciate you joining us here tonight. Hey, it's always a pleasure to be on with you. Thank you. All right, so listen, the, the, the Pope was awfully candid in his Q&A with reporters. Do you think his, his who am I to judge stance means that change is indeed coming? Well, I really doubt that. Um, in fact, just back in April, April 10th, a priest from Argentina uh, was defrocked. He was removed from the clerical state for advocating for homosexual marriage and for tra transgenders. Uh, that had to have come out under uh, Pope Francis uh, or over Pope Francis' signature. So what he's saying here is what the church has always taught, uh, that those who are, have a homosexual inclination uh, we need to tr to love them like brothers and sisters and help them in their life. But at the same time, the activity is not something that can be condoned and it cannot some be something that is promoted. And that's essentially what he said. But I think a lot of people, though, Steve, are seeing this as perhaps a sign of hope. Do you not read that into this at all? Well, a sign of hope in what context, of course? Uh, he actually explicitly referenced the Catechism of the Catholic Church, and I think it's well worth reading what the Catechism has to say. It starts in Article 2357, and it says pretty much what I just said, what Pope Francis said, what Pope Benedict said, what Pope John Paul II said. You love the individual no matter what their uh, difficulties in life might be. It might be poverty, uh, they might be uh, homosexuality, it, it might be all kinds of different things that you might have to suffer. Uh, you love that person, you help them in any way that you can, but at the same time, there's certain activities that uh, simply can't be uh, taken as acceptable. All right, so then let's talk about the role of women in the church. He said that the church would be sterile without women, but it's also, you know, he doesn't want women as priests. He doesn't want women as, as leaders. How, what do you make of, of, of his take on women right now? Right. Well, it isn't that he doesn't want them necessarily, it's that the church cannot ordain them. This has been a doctrine that has been reiterated for 2,000 years. He's just repeating a teaching that is at least that old. And what we're, we're seeing with Pope Francis is a recognition, as has been seen in Benedict and John Paul II, that the church is essentially feminine, she's the bride of Christ, and that Mary is the greatest of the apostles, that's a doctrine of the church because she's the only one who proclaimed the gospel completely. She did so without even saying a word. She gave birth to the, to the gospel. She gave birth to the word. So women are critically important to the church. Uh, and, you know, John Paul II said that the Marian principle is greater than the Petrine principle, greater even than the Pope. So that is a tension that's always been in, in, in Christianity, in Catholicism. And uh, what Pope Francis is saying is perfectly in line with that. So this was his first international trip, huge crowds, a lot of accessibility to the folks. You, you think this was a, a successful trip to Rio? Oh, absolutely. I mean, three million people on Copacabana Beach. Huge. There hasn't been a World Youth Day like this uh, in, in over a decade. It's, it's a remarkable turnout. Uh, he's clearly an extraordinarily well-loved pope. Uh, he's clearly a very strong pope. I mean, I, we expect to see him around for a long time. 
And I think the church is really going to benefit from the, the grace and the poverty and the humility he brings to the throne. And Steve, you're going to be happy to know I'm now following him on Twitter. So I've got... Wow! I, indulge, I know, right? I'm excited. One of the 200 people I'm following. Yeah. There's something like a million people following him. So you're in great company. It's like 1.7. It's huge. Steve, as always, thank you so much for joining us here on Fox 4 News. Thank you for having me. Thanks. Have a great night.